Hey campers, George here, back in the man cave. Woo! Shock and horror, right? Well, we diddly chilly today, and yesterday we finally got some snow. So it's really nice outside, so I'm gonna have to work on that. Thing. But I'm in the man cave today because, well, got me another sharp and shiny thing. Well, half of it is anyway. Been looking for unusual things, and you know, I've been on that European knife going on and uh, been looking at their stuff was looking at a manufacturer that I'd seen before and that is MAM M -A -M. and I was looking at their products very similar to the other European ones like Old Bear uh, uh, Antonini Knives and of course everybody's favorite the Opinol which is probably the most well-known European pocket knife uh, out there. I had bought a man before and I, I, I did a, a review on this actually I bought two of their knives and this is the the one that actually has a lock on it the other one didn't and uh, it, it works pretty well and uh, the look is is very typical of the Opinel or the Antonini and uh, very similar throughout Europe. And these guys are so inexpensive, I can't get away from them. <laughs> so I was looking at their website for MAM. They by far are the, the, the least expensive. And they, like the rest of the Europeans, make cutlery knives and eating utensils and things like that. And I came across an unusual thing that they make. And that's this guy here. It's a knife and fork combination, and they just put a little uh, bottle opener on the back. I, I've often wondered about why people even bother, bother with the bottle openers. I'm, I don't know about you, I can't remember the last time I used a bottle opener. But uh, I suspect that in, in Europe, they're still doing a lot of bottle opening, which is why this is on here. But here it is here. And it's from Man, and they're out of Portugal. And as you can see, it's tiny. It's a small little guy. And what it is, is a, an eating utensil, an all-in-one. It has a knife and a fork on it. And I thought I'd have a look at it and uh, share it with you. So let's have a look-see. So here it is here, and it's made by Man. You can see that on the on the handle there and they're out of Portugal they've been around for a while since uh, 1870 they've been making eating utensils for for quite a while obviously it's family owned just like all the other ones and this their model number for this is the MAM 1C as you can see it's a combination it has a fork on it a little three-pronged fork it just folds out and on the other side it has a knife and a knife blade and pretty typical blade for this kind of thing. It is a cutlery knife. Uh, that's what it's made for. It's made for eating or cutting up your food or things like that, which is what I suspect all the other ones are really all about. They do make gardening knives and things like that. I've been looking at that just to see what they do with them and they have all different kinds. They've got pruning and all, all sorts of things which is way out of my knowledge base as far as uh, gardening goes. Uh, has a fork and a blade on it and then like I said they attach the uh, bottle opener to it. The first thing I will do <laughs> is take it off. I, I really don't have any use for a bottle opener but I do have a use for a ring I'm always using that for my lids on my pots and things like that to lift them off the fire when they're hot. So I'm going to take that off and then we'll have a look-see. So I took it off and you can see it's just a bottle opener and it's on, on that ring. I will be keeping it. I'm a gatherer, hoarder, whatever you want to call me. <laughs> but I don't throw anything away. I always find a use for it. And here it is here and it does have a little clip on it here. Well, not a clip, but a, a wire keeper. So you could attach it to something, hang it from something, which is uh, nice to have. Now, let's have a look at the main thing as soon as Mary gets out the way. Say good morning, Mary. 
She's not happy with me because it's cold in here. I'm too cheap to turn on the heat. So, so you can see the blade here and it, it has a, a thumb slot in it so you can just pull it out. There it is there. No lock on it at all. Now the blade is stainless steel. And I believe all they say about it is that it's German stainless steel. And you can see on the blade there, uh, they have their name, ma'am, and uh, what else does it say? Uh, INDX. Oh, uh, it's the town it's made in. And I, I don't know how to pronounce it, but here it is here. You can figure that out. Maybe your Portuguese is better than mine. But you can see... Uh, the blade there. And looking at the blade, um, I would have to say drop point, maybe spear point. I'm not sure. They say drop point. So it is a drop point blade. Uh, very thin, typical of a eating utensil, kitchen knife type thing. The reason it's so thin is they cut better uh, for preparing food. It's perfect. So uh, German stainless steel. The blade length is two and a quarter inches. Not Like I said, not very long at all. It makes it very small. But I think that's the whole point, is just carry it in your pocket or hang it on a belt or on your pack. Or, and you can have it on you for an eating utensil. They say, they call the grind a flat grind. And if you look at it, you can actually see that it, it is. It's simply a blade. Almost like a Scandi, I want to say. I'll tell you this. It's extremely sharp. It uh, will cut anything. Let me find it. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, you can see that. It slices right through. And I will say that about all the uh, knives that I've looked at from Europe. With these thin blades, they are extremely sharp. And, of course, being stainless, they're going to hold the edge pretty well if you're using it for food prep. You can see it does have uh, two bolsters on it, on the handle, and they are aluminum, I believe. Like I said, there is no locking mechanism on this knife. The handle uh, is wood, obviously, and I believe it is beech wood. It's not bad, very basic handle. It's nothing fancy. They don't need to be. You don't have to have a special grip. They just made it look a little prettier than just being a, a regular flat handle. They put a little like cut ferrules into it on the side, I want to call them. Um, the size of the knife, here is my hand. You can see it's tiny. And then of course you have the fork and the fork will just fold out just like the, the blade. And the, but you can see they just twisted it. It has a twist on the hand, on the fork there. You can see it uh, right there. Um, it's twisted around so that you have the fork and it has three prongs on it. Not very big at all. Which I don't, I don't have a problem with. I think, I think it has to be, it has to be a small thing to carry around. You don't really want anything big if you're just having it in your pocket and things like that. So, uh, like I said, it did have the two stainless steel bolsters on it and there is no lock on it. So very plain, very straightforward, nothing fancy about it. No, no, no. Handle length is about three and a quarter, I believe, inches. And then, of course, you have your blade, um, which is another two and a quarter. And then the fork, everything. And I believe the, the fork is just under two inches. It's about seven or one and seven eighths. Your overall length is going to be about seven and a quarter inches. Um, not too big, not too small. I think it's right size. Even with it open, you can see the fork sticks out. So, yeah, you cut up your food and poke it with a fork and eat away. I would fold the blade away <laughs> when you do that. You don't want the blade too close to your face when you... I would fold it away. So you'd put that away and you have your fork. Do I have a use for it? I think I will. I'll I'll put it in my bushcraft pack and, and have it as a eating utensil. Go on a walkabout and you plan on eating an apple or or having a snack or something. You know, this doesn't take up a lot of room. And the overall weight... Uh, 1.38 ounces is what they say. It is light. So there you have a look at it there. You can see it. And you can see the ma'am on there. 
fun little thing to own, I think. I think I, I, I think I could use this. For a, I, I would use this on a walkabout when I'm going to go out and have a cup of coffee and maybe have a snack with it. You could use it to cut up and, and prep your food. They've done a good job on it. The workmanship is okay. It's nothing fancy, nothing wrong with it. They haven't fancied it up at all. They kept it pretty simple. The way they have it in is, is uh, just uh, two pins. You can't take it apart and, and fiddle with it. If you do, you're going to have to repin it yourself. The blade is, it is a nice blade. I do like their, their blades. You know, all the European blades, I don't have a problem with at all. How much did I pay for it? Well, a blistering this much. And as you can see on my budget, I'm always good on that price. <laughs> I, I got it on Amazon. Um, you can look it up. You can. Uh, I don't advise you to type in MAM because you're going to get everything but their knives. You actually have to do MAM knives. What to do with this now? You know, I'm a wee diddly hungry. So I'm thinking it's time to go walk about in the snow. Not much, but there's snow on the ground. Let's go have breakfast and we'll eat it with this. What do you say? Let's go. So here we are campers taking a trudge in the snow. Not much on the ground you can see uh, we probably got about three or four inches the other day and it's warmed up considerably today. It's about 27 right now right, and it's going to get warmer so we're going to start to see a bit of a melt. As you can see, blue skies. So anyway, Sorry, got interrupted by some guys on their bicycles uh, riding by. Good day to do it. I think that's why there's everybody out, including me. <laughs> this is a popular place. This is Riverbend Nature Center. And they have a couple of trails and everything out here and it's uh, not too far from my place. I'm walking along the uh, edge of the straight river, it's just down there. Let's see if I can find a place to stop and make me some breakfast. Stop. <laughs> Beautiful day. Well, I'm down by the the river here and this place looks pretty familiar <laughs> if I remember I think Lee and I came here a couple of months ago and stopped here and some coffee and made some bread it's beautiful today good day to be out good day See if I can find a spot here. I like this spot. Well, as much as I wanted to be close to the river, it's just it's the wind is picking up and it's blowing right around that corner. I think I'm a little bit more sheltered here. I'm just away from the river a bit, but I think this might work. There's plenty of wood around, so hopefully I can use my bush box. Let's have breakfast.
So for breakfast today, we are going to have, I think I'm going to have a breakfast burrito. I brought some tortillas, onions, tomatoes, and some dirty rice that I made last night. This is leftovers, that'll go in the burrito. Dirty rice and red beans. This guy. See that? Crybaby Craig's. Probably the best hot sauce I've ever had. It's a Crybaby Craig. He's out of uh, Febo here in Minnesota. He's been around since 2012. It's in, and it's handcrafted in uh, Minnesota. And then it is Crybaby Craig's habanero and garlic hot sauce in the perfect habanero pe pepper kick and garlic goodness hot sauce. Crybaby Craig's is the only hot sauce on the market right now using fresh ingredients that are not cooked. Pretty cool. And I got to tell you, I'm not much of a hot sauce fan. But the first time I tried this, actually it was at work, and I don't know if you remember Eddie, and we uh, went up to his place in the land not too long ago when he was hunting. Gave me something and said, give this a try. Tried it once and I was hooked. Can't get enough of this stuff. You can use it in anything. Perfect. Not too hot. And the taste is awesome. I love that garlic taste. Give it a try. Cry Baby Craig's. There'll be a link in the description below. You can go to his website and maybe give it a try. You won't be sorry. It's going on my burrito, that's for sure. Got some other stuff going here. I've got some grated cheese, some lettuce, onions and peppers. So I'm going to put it all in a frying pan, get that grilling and then I'm going to add an egg. And we'll scramble it up with that good mixings and put it in burrito with some crab baby crabs. Whoop! And I need an eating utensil. Ha! Oh, look at that. This guy should do. Let's get him grilled up a little bit. We'll add the uh, dirty rice and red beans. An egg and crab baby crabs. Whoop. This thing actually works pretty well. It's a nice size. And for the way I cook, <laughs> it'll do. Gonna have to warm up the tortillas somehow. We can use the lid. So we got the put a little bit of butter with it. Get them going. This cook set I'm using. See it all lying around here? Is <laughs> a typical Boy Scout cook set. If I remember, it was really inexpensive, and it works just fine. You got a pan, you got a pot, you got lids for both. That'll cover it. You can use this as a plate or a warmer for your tortilla. <laughs> so we scramble up an egg here with the onions and everything. Then we're going to add the rice and beans, and in the burrito it goes. Oh, I'm hungry. So we got the egg scrambled and ready and now I'm gonna add some beans into that and then into there with that. It's warming up the tortilla so I'm gonna put my beans and scrambled egg and rice and onions and peppers right into my tortilla right now. There you can see it there now we're going to put some crybaby on there. Whew. The tortilla is nice and warm. Grated cheese on here. Oh, rabbit food. Fresh rabbit food on there. And now, crybaby Craig's. Give it a little shake it up. Oh. And put it on my burrito. Cheers. Ho, ho, ho. Don't need a lot. Breakfast burrito with Crybaby Craig. Cheers. That's the ticket. Oh, I'm hungry, and this is good. That sauce.
this works. I think while I'm munching on this, I'm going to heat up some water for coffee. You have a cup of coffee that's really strong. That'll work though. Let me stir it up with my little fork and knife. Yep, that does the job. <laughs> Actually, it's not a bad little thing. It's tiny, but it's handy to have. I think I like the idea. Oh yeah, that burrito was good. Went down well. In fact, I cheated and had two. You just didn't see the second one. <laughs> mm. Strong. Oh, good. That'll work. The man. Combination knife and fork. Eating utensil. It's not bad, it's tiny, it's well made, and I suppose it does the job. Didn't try the knife though. Let's see if it'll cut a piece of wood. Hold on. Got me a piece of wood here. And I know this thing is, <laughs> yeah, it's sharp. It's really sharp. Look at that. So it'll prep your food for you which is really what it's for. And actually, just about everything they make, even the other knives, food prep. Do you need to have it for camping only? No, you can use it in your kitchen. They do have a wide range of knives, even fixed blade cooking knives. They do a pretty good job. In fact, just about everybody does that. Alpanel, Antonini, and Mam. And there's others out there. You might want to check them out. But before you do that, don't forget, like, share, subscribe. You know the story. Sure, I'll be back again. It's getting ice fishing time. That's coming soon. Just saying. Thanks for watching. And you all be safe out there. Take care now. Bye.